Hi, this is Cal Harrison for Information Security Media Group. Welcome to today's session entitled Breaking Down Barriers, DevSecOps, and CSPM, featuring Ed Lewis, Director of Secure Development and Cloud Transformation at Adoptive, and Ken Siegel, Partner Solutions Architect at Wiz. Before I introduce our speakers, just a bit of background on this session. In today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, businesses are becoming increasingly invested in cloud environments to drive innovation and efficiency. However, this shift to the cloud comes with its own set of security challenges. Tools like cloud native application protection platforms, cloud security posture management, and DevSecOps initiatives are more critical than ever. As cyber threats become more sophisticated and regulatory requirements more stringent, these tools serve as a North Star for cloud visibility and control necessary to protect sensitive data and security. Today, we'll discuss what CSPM means to your organization. Now, before we begin, let me tell you a bit about Information Security Media Group. We currently publish more than two dozen international media sites, Bank Info Security and CU Info Security for Financial Services, Gov Info Security for the Public Sector, and Health uh, Care Info Security for the Medical Community, plus Info Risk Today, Data Breach Today, and Careers Info Security. Each of these sites is dedicated for, to providing education and news on information security. With over a million members registered to our websites, we have created a true information source tackling the key issues of interest to our unique audience. If you have questions for our speakers during this session, please submit them via the chat on your screen, as well as any technical issues during the webinar. In addition, I want to emphasize that the content being presented in today's webinar is copyrighted material and is meant for today's session and individual study purposes only. If you or your institution would like to use the information presented in today's session or are looking for customized training education, please contact us. Next, a little about our sponsor. Optive Security is the cyber advisory and solutions leader, delivering strategic and technical expertise to nearly 6,000 companies across every major industry. They partner with organizations to advise, deploy, and operate cybersecurity programs from strategy and managed security services to risk integration and technology solutions. With clients at the center of their unmatched ecosystem of people, products, partners, and programs, they accelerate business progress like no other company can. Our other sponsor, Wiz, is reinventing cloud security from the inside out. Led by an experienced and visionary team, they are on a mission to help organizations create secure cloud environments that accelerate their businesses. By creating a normalizing layer between cloud environments, their platform enables organizations to rapidly identify and remove critical risks. Our first panelist, Ed Lewis, is Director of Optive's Secure Cloud Transf Transformation Practice. Ed's role is to help clients with strategic advisory, design, and deployment of security and technology automation solutions and cloud security transformation. He leads a team of highly skilled consultants and engineers who support clients across several key domains, including security orchestration, automation, and response, secure DevOps, container security, infrastructure as code, secrets management, and cloud security. Next is Ken Siegel, a seasoned WIS solutions engineer with a focus on empowering cloud alliance and channel partners. With over 20 years of experience, Ken has collaborated with leading security vendors such as Exabeam, Elusive, HighTrust, and Proofpoint, providing expert solutions to complex security and compliance challenges. Before specializing in security, Ken developed a deep understanding of enterprise IT while supporting operations at a major pharmaceutical company. Ed, Ken, thank you so much for joining. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks, Kel. Happy to be here. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. So enterprises have really been migrating to multi-cloud environments. What are the most common security challenges that we're seeing from that trend? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And um, you know, if you take a step back at the journey that organizations have had and the industry writ large has had over uh, probably the past ten years, I mean, 
the the migration to cloud or the the race to to migrate to the cloud um, has been you know pretty fast and and there's been some real catalyst moments um, that have been driving that like COVID for example um, a lot of that migration was actually done by IT teams and um, while security may may or may not have been involved um, cloud security is is a relatively novel concept for many organizations and having that capability sitting within organizations has been hard. I mean, IT understands IT security, typically understands on-prem security and cloud security has been a, a bit of a new world for many organizations um, to, to really be able to, um, you know, upskill and to be able to evolve in as more and more infrastructure is, you know, in the cloud. Um, what we're seeing now is, um, more commonly multi-cloud hybrid, right? Where you're you're seeing a portion of um, infrastructure and workloads and applications staying on-prem, but then um, you know uh, you know also moving to the cloud. But um, many organizations are taking a best of breed approach, where they're really going after some of the individual services that sit within each of the CSPs. They may use AWS for one thing. They may use uh, Microsoft or GCP for, for another thing or other things. And, and they're really looking to, well, how do I efficiently run that kind of environment? And more importantly, how do I secure it? And that's that's where, um, you know, some of the, the cloud security tooling like Wiz and others um, have really, you know, come to the market um, to, to fill a need uh, to really enable um, organizations and, and be able to operate effectively, uh, efficiently and, and securely within um, the, the new multi-cloud environments. Um, yeah. In terms of you know some of the different uh, challenges that that they're really seeing, um, you know I, I think without these kind of tools, we do really see things like a lack of visibility of the assets. Like uh, we see a lot of organizations that don't actually know you know what they have in the cloud. Um, the cloud providers made it very very easy to migrate to the cloud or at least uh, spin up a cloud account. You know a, a manager with a credit card uh, can can probably set up an AWS account, and security may or may not be actually aware of that until they get the bill. Um, so, you know, lack of visibility of cloud assets is definitely, you know, one thing that we see, um, you know, within this. Um, also, the, the threat landscape as well, I, I think, where you've got teams that uh, don't necessarily or haven't had a lot of experience with operating in the cloud, um, then, you know, security teams also don't have a lot of experience in, in knowing how to secure that. Um, lastly, also around uh, the ownership model. So, who owns it, right? Like, um, does IT run cloud security or does uh, the SOC run cloud security or is it a mix of both? So, so really understanding who does what is, is something that, um, you know, organizations are having to figure out. It's really like the operating model, which sits, sits behind cloud and cloud security, um, which is a little bit different to, to maybe what they've, um, you know, seen before. Yeah. What I, what I'm seeing it, just to kind of drill down into like why visibility is an issue in cloud is, Cloud opens up all kinds of new services, whether it's database services or authentication services or storage, different types of workloads like serverless, and you have containers and virtual machines. And so there are lots of different choices that developers can use across these cloud environments, across multiple clouds. And so just understanding what services and what uh, potential workloads and things in terms of that inventory are there that visibility is hard to just get a handle on for a lot of customers. So that's really the first step, just because there are so many choices. And cloud isn't necessarily inherently risky, uh, but because of all of these different choices, that presents a problem. And to contrast that with on-prem, uh, typically security teams had a known defined architecture of how they were going to build applications. They had a perimeter that they were securing. They had a known security tools that they've been using for decades. And now cloud is really changing this model and it's extremely dynamic. It's changing uh, sometimes day to day or even uh, faster. And so it's just getting an understanding of that visibility of what's in cloud is super important. And that's really the baseline is once that challenge is, is addressed, then we can move on to things like, how do we understand out of all of the different potential issues, the findings of vulnerabilities or internet exposure or access to sensitive data, uh, or there might be malware in the environment or excessive permissions like administrative permissions, third parties that have access to these cloud environments. All of these individual alerts create lots of noise. And so customers are dealing with this inundation of noise from their SIM tools where they're trying to try to make sense of what's really important. 
And so it's really hard to understand how to prioritize with the right context and clarity of what's important out of all of that noise. And then like Ed mentioned, uh, application developers have a lot more power in this cloud journey. Uh, really, they're being able, they're able to subscribe to new services without asking permission to use a new service, whether it's a database or authentication. And if it's not configured properly or through a combination of things, uh, it could expose the environment. So on the one hand, you want to make sure that we empower those uh, developers and everyone in the organization to be a part of that security journey. Uh, the other thing is we need to make sure that visibility is the same across the board for everyone. So what can um, defenders expect or not expect from traditional on-prem tools and you know the skills that they have available on staff these days? So maybe I'll take this one, Ed. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing in terms of how security has been done, and I mentioned how it's been done for decades, Part of the issue with cloud is cloud is expanding extremely rapidly. So customers are moving from an on-prem environment, taking their workloads and either modernizing or just doing a lift and shift into the cloud environments. And it's creating this rapidly expanding cloud footprint. They're consuming new technologies, like I mentioned containers and serverless functions, now AI services and applications. Data is spread out throughout these clouds and the cloud application teams are growing very, very quickly and they're innovating very quickly. And so that's just continuing to increase. But what we're also seeing is just the same way security has been done for decades is the security teams are not growing at that same pace, yet they're trying to manage all of the potential risks that are associated with this growing cloud. So there are critical risks associated with blind spots in terms of visibility of the inventory, not understanding this communication between dev teams uh, and the security teams working together. Uh, we need to make sure that we're providing some tools there so that there's not really a conflict uh, of interest, but everyone's working together. Um, and it really make we need to make sure that we're still accelerating the business by allowing developers to develop very quickly and not have security put roadblocks in place that's going to slow them down. So we need to just enable them with with the right tools in place. Absolutely. Uh, and um just um, regarding the tools that are available today, I mean, obviously there's been a lot um, of news about cloud native application protection platforms and the value that they have. Uh, also, you know, we've heard a lot about cloud security posture management. I was wondering if you could kind of take us through those uh, types of tools and, you know, what are the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of each one? What, what, what do they bring to the table? Sure, I, I can take this one. Um, so uh, probably about five years ago, Gartner coined the term CNAP, which is Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. And you know, I think since that time, the market has really, um, you know, really been pushing to to try and be, you know, the platform, the the main player in that space. Um, really, what CNAP is is a culmination of a of a number of different technologies, really kind of coming to a head under under a single platform. Um, you know, I, I think the, the what's probably been around the longest is CSPM, which is Cloud Security Posture Management. And what that is, is really all the policies and configurations within your, your cloud environment, whether it be you know, Microsoft Azure, AWS, GCP, um, or others. Um, you know, really that's, that's, you know, how are you configuring your environment? I mean, to Ken's point before, you know, cloud is not inherently safe or unsafe. It's, it's really how you configure that environment. If you, you know, configure it and leave an open API, uh, to the internet that connects into a S3 bucket with, um, you know, admin privileges, uh, that's that's probably not something you want to do, right? So that that would be unsafe. Um, so you know, really, uh, that that's really what the you know CSPM is, and that's probably been around the longest. And and um, there's a lot of different providers that offer something in that space. But um, CNAP is really an evolution of cloud security, where they've looked more broadly at um, you know the way that organizations are using cloud, the areas where there's potential vulnerabilities around cloud, and it's really expanded into different modules, right? So. Um, you know, really, I, I think at its core, you've got things like cloud infrastructure entitlements management, which is really um, the entitlements, uh, the, the roles and, um, you know, that a person has within an environment, their privileges and their access. Um, really, you know, that 
that is what you know um, Keem is, is is all about. Um, then you've also got uh, you know cloud workload protection. So that's what, another one of the core pieces of CNAP. So that's really your runtime security essentially. Um, you know within within your environment for your, for your workloads. Um, so that's that's really at its core. However, CNAP is increasingly expanding out into you know a number of different other areas. You've got uh, things like DSPM, so data security posture management, so really monitoring um, the data that's in the cloud and what's happening with it. So, you know, if, if you're getting data exfiltration, if you have a bad actor in your environment or maybe inside a threat, um, that kind of capability can be really useful in understanding, you know, what's happening with your data at any given time. Um, you've also got other areas like API security is is another area that uh, many of the, the CNAPs, including Wiz, um, you know, really you know can help with. Um, and then you've got some of the other integrations. So Ken mentioned before around DevSecOps, um, Wiz has a really great capability of integrating into your software supply chain um, to be able to scan, you know, your your uh, pipelines uh, and repos, um, you know, from a cloud security posture perspective, and and identifying, you know, if there is any issues within that environment, um, you know, that that need to be addressed. Uh, so you know that that's another area where there's a lot of merit to to investing because um, you know. The, there's, there's historically always been a friction between development teams and security teams, um, and, and it makes sense, right? Because development teams, their their mandate is to write and ship code as as you know effectively and as efficiently as possible to support the business. Security uh, responsibility is to really um, secure the enterprise and, and make sure that there's no um, no vectors in which a bad actor could you know um, breach breach an organization's uh, infrastructure. So. Um, as a result of that, historically, there has been that clash um, between security and development teams. And Wiz is really good at kind of helping build that bridge between that teams without creating, you know, too much of a burden between, um, you know, between those different groups, um, which historically do report up to, either, you know, one group under the, the CIO, one group under the, the CISO, right? So, um, you know, that that is another area where CNAP is really um, making strides with organizations um, because it, it's helping um, overcome a historical a historical challenge and cultural issue that, that many, many organizations have had. Um, you know, and, and I, I think over time, we're only going to see this, you know, evolve more and more as we get into things like CDR or, or CIRA. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, from a cloud sec perspective, um, CNAP is really kind of where it's landed and it's where we're going to see the most innovation and, and roadmap. Um, you know, over time to really address a lot of the the concerns that um, CISOs and, and CIOs, you know, should or or, or do have um, around their cloud environments. Yeah, I I agree with Ed in some cases that I think you need the right tool sets out of a CNAP platform. Where I think uh, it's really important for customers to understand the differences between platforms is. If you take a best of breed or point solution approach, you end up with many different signals and you still have those same challenges of noise coming from or alerts coming from these different tools. And then it's the job of the customer to understand what actually out of all of these signals, what is really important. And so um, I think the first step for a customer really should take a, be to take a look at a platform approach that covers all of these areas in one place um, and then helps with the investigation by providing that evidence across these different tool sets. And uh, to describe that, I have a slide here that really talks about kind of the path that we like customers to go through, which is that first step of understanding the, uh, the inventory, that visibility across their cloud environments. Yet Wiz, everything is built on a Wiz security graph. So we understand relationships between workloads and vulnerabilities, data, uh, malware, internet exposure, and all of these different things, um, understanding those relationships allows us to actually prioritize. So we're able to provide the context of out of all of this noise, what's what do we really need customers to focus on to be able to prevent risks in their environment? And how do they actually respond to them? How do they remediate those risks in a prioritized list? So it's really important to have that context and clarity around the, that issue. Ed also talked about how we need to make sure that we're providing that to the different teams that, that need to actually take care of those issues. If everything goes to the security team and we still operate in these silos of security, DevOps, uh, developers, incident responders, uh, everyone's using different tools, um, that's a problem for the organization. So 
as a platform approach, we want to make sure that we're providing the same level of visibility and information to those teams, but actually segmenting the views so they're not drowning in noise from things that they don't need to worry about, that they're only focused on what's important to them, their resources, and what they need to fix so they can fix those quickly. On the threat detection side, if there is an actual threat in the cloud, we also need to provide that visibility in real time. So same platform again, not necessarily a different tool to manage or a different tool to go to and configure. We need to provide that same level of visibility of what's happening in real time. Is there a threat that I need to act on now? And how do we get that evidence uh, to the actual defenders, to the incident responders and the SOC team? And we need to be able to push that out to the tools that they're using today. And everything that we do in cloud, we also need to trace the root cause and put guardrails back into the development cycle. So if we have policies that we're applying to cloud to identify vulnerabilities, we need to provide context to developers so that they know as they're developing and they, they add a library that has a version that has a vulnerability, they need to be able to know hey, this, this is something I need to update while they're writing that code. They don't want to wait till security comes back and runs a report. So we need to make sure that those guardrails that are in place early in the life cycle. But if something is in cloud or something uh, turns into a threat, we also need that, that root cause analysis. So we could all, always trace things all the way back to code. We know who checked in the code, who checked in maybe that cloud secret that allowed access to a database or access into a cloud account. We need to be able to always trace that back so we can remediate extremely quick, quickly and know who to go to to actually fix those issues. So it's a continuous process there, um, making sure that we have that complete visibility. Well, th this is great. And you know, I imagine uh, for our attendees for this webinar, you know, or various places kind of on their journey uh, in, in terms of cloud security, What's your recommendation, you know, for kind of knowing where you are and, and where you need to, where you need to be headed uh, on this journey? I think as I encounter customers uh, over the last three and a half years at, at Wiz, I've seen customers at every stage of the journey. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a small customer with a cloud, small cloud footprint. It could be a very large enterprise and they're just getting started with cloud. So uh, customers tend to be at every stage of this journey, um, but the first stage is really getting that visibility. So we created this cloud security maturity framework so we can actually help customers go through this process. First step is understanding what they have in each cloud. So connecting a platform to the cloud to do that analysis and collect that inventory so that everyone in the organization knows what's there. The next step is we need to identify and prioritize risk effectively. So instead of just having thousands and thousands of alerts that we just track down, we need to prioritize what actually is going to impact the business the most. What's the most critical issue today that either attackers can access sensitive data or shut down a cloud account or delete resources. We need to understand those and prioritize those effectively and then start knocking those off the list of what's, what's actually critical and get to zero critical issues. We need to make sure that we're allowing teams to democratize security. One customer I worked with, they had six people in security, but they had hundreds of people that were developers and DevOps and incident responders. If everyone is responsible for security, we're just immediately expanding that security consciousness across the organization and making sure that this six person team or a 200 person team, they're not the roadblocks in the organization. And then we may, need to make sure that we're protecting that sensitive data so we can scan data across the organization make sure it's not at risk, put the right uh, remediations in place. And on the code and defense side, we need to make sure that we're putting those guardrails in place. So any vulnerabilities or risks during the development cycle is addressed during that cycle very quickly. And that we have guardrails in place so nothing gets pushed into cloud that could expose it. And if there is threat detection uh, or a threat in, in that cloud environment, uh, we can have those threat uh, those responders actually respond in real time, knowing exactly what the issue is and and fixing it back at the source. Yeah, and just to just to maybe add to this as well, I mean, we we help clients a lot, um, you know, on this very very topic um, at all stages of the journey, right? Whether whether on prem today and wanting to 
migrate to the cloud or multi-cloud, um, or if they've already you know started that journey and maybe stalled, or maybe they're well and truly into it, but um, you know want to want to know where they're at from a security posture standpoint. And um, you know, I, I think tooling is very helpful to kind of get a pulse check on uh, where you're at. Um, you know, so using something like a CSPM scan um, to really understand where, um, what is the security posture of your environment, you know, how are you configured today. Um, however, you know, tooling is one part of this, right? Like it, it, when, you, when you talk about cloud security maturity, you really need to look at it programmatically. And, you know, how are you combining people, process and technology, you know, um, preferably in, in that order as well. Um, to to really um, you know ensure that you do have good security posture in the cloud that you've got the teams actually collaborating and working together you've got the right operating model in place the right governance in place um, you know like tooling will do a lot but it only only will go so far right so you need to really address this you know programmatically with with a really strong um, cloud security strategy or, or just a cloud strategy that is underpinned by security best practices, right? That, that there really shouldn't be any separation in that, if I'm being honest, um, because they, they go hand in hand. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's really how, you know, we recommend that the clients, um, you know, look at cloud security because, um, you know, it, it's just like Ken mentioned before, uh, cloud isn't safe or unsafe. It, it's really around, you know, how it's configured and, and, and architected. And, and that goes the same for cloud security. Um, you know, tooling will do a lot, but it only do so much. And, you know, what we see with clients, even clients that we're helping, you know, implement Wiz or, or some of the other CNAP tools is uh, deploying it is, is really important and configuring it up front is really in, important, but um, investing the time and effort to really operationalize that product is, is how, um, how you really get the, the benefit and, and really how you get that ROI on that investment as well. Um, so that's things like upskilling the team. Um, you know, making sure that they're competent and capable to be able to operate the tool, that it's, you know, integrated with other applications so you can, you know, build workflows into it, whether you, you know, want to do automated remediations or integrate with ServiceNow or other, other uh, you know, applications. Um, you know, doing, doing the work to make sure it's set up properly and configured, um, you know, in your, your, you know, essentially contextual environment is really important to, to make this successful. Yeah, one of the ways that Optiv really helps our customers, Wiz customers, is as we're going through this journey, Wiz is is very easy to onboard from that first standpoint of getting visibility. But as you think about integrating with existing products like Jura or ServiceNow for ticketing or creating tickets that developers can use to be able to track issues or security can use to track issues, all of those things need to actually be configured as well, using the same processes that those customers are already using. So. When we go into a new customer, it's easy to onboard, but it's all of the, the people and processes that we really need to consider. So Optiv really helps us in those customer environments kind of take it the next step of how do we actually uh, put a platform like Wiz in place, uh, making sure that it's going to operate properly, but also using the existing tool sets that, that these developers, uh, DevOps, SOC teams are all using. These have been some great tips, uh, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's, it's been kind of jam-packed. So just kind of generally, can you tell us a little bit more about the Optiv and Wiz uh, partnership and, and how you're working together uh, for clients and, and helping them on these on their journey? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so, I mean, Optiv and, and Wiz, um, you know, have been working together to really, you know, uh, in, in a true partnership to be able to um, to help clients really get the most out of their, their cloud security platform um, and, and to really be able to operationalize and scale. Um, that's, you know, as Ken said, you know, deploying Wiz is, um, is really easy. Uh, it can be stood up very, very quickly, but, you know, from there, it does require configuration, integration. Every environment is a little bit different. Uh, and then ha and then pairing it up with some of the, like the, the policies and processes and other toolings in that environment and the upskilling, um, all of those things you know take a little bit more time and um, you know take a little bit more experience um, you know with cloud security professionals to really kind of get that up and running. So um, you know we help uh, clients in, in a number of different ways around the Wiz platform. Um, you know, from a you know product design or, or from even from a product selection standpoint, um, you know. I think um, you know, we we help clients 
um, understand where they want to go with their with their cloud native application protection platform. Um, while you know there's a little bit of differences in the licensing arrangement between um, some of the different um, cloud security tools that are out there, um, Wiz really takes the approach of you know offering. Um, basically access to all of the, the capabilities within Wiz around that that kind of the wheel of, of, of what CNAP is. Um, and, and so, you know, helping clients design that out and, and where do they want to go uh, and where do they want to, you know, uh, go first and prioritizing that is important because it, it's sometimes not always feasible to, to do everything at once. So, you know, understanding, you know, what does that what does that journey look like? How are you going to roll this out? How are you going to integrate it? How are you going to turn on different components? Um, you know, that, all of that's really important. And that comes out of that kind of design and deployment side of the WIS platform. Um, I, I think one of the areas that we really thrive uh, from a services capability is that operationalization component, right? Like, how do you how do you really make make it work? Um, you know, and how do you get the most out of it? You know, within the contextual environment of of an organization. Um, so that that's you know you could call that maybe day two services so post post deployment um, you know how are you really helping an organization get the most out of the platform and, and truly get a, a strong ROI um, for, from their investment. Um, we we also offer a couple of other things like maturity services which is more of a more of a light touch arrangement where we're providing access to SMEs you know um, on, on a less than full time arrangement so that um, so that organizations have someone that they can call and work with to to really maybe troubleshoot or or help um, you know help scale and, and then lastly um, you know staff augmentation as well right pretty straightforward but um, you know where they where an organization maybe doesn't have um, you know, team members um, to today that have the experience to be able to help operationalize and scale out the tool and, and even just operate the tool. Um, that, that's another area that we've been helping clients in. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the, the partnership that we have with Wiz is really great um, in, in the sense that, um, you know, they, they really focus on, on helping clients kind of get stood up. And then, and then they work with partners such as Optiv to really help organizations scale and and to be able to get the most out of their platform. Yeah, it, it talked a lot about kind of the journey of implementing Wiz and getting it integrated into existing customer environments. Kind of like how to get started with Wiz uh, is really easy. We like to do uh, we like to have customers actually take a look at Wiz. Um, we work with Optiv doing security assessments as well. So if a customer wanted to take a look at Wiz in their cloud environment and just take those initial first steps of gaining visibility across their cloud organizations, as well as understanding what critical risks they have, that's a pretty immediate process. And so we always uh, love to have customers reach out uh, just to take that first step uh, to see if they're, they are exposed. Um, there's a lot of value just in that uh, understanding of if there's a critical risk that exposes the environment, we want them to know about it immediately. And then we can have further discussions about services that they might want to actually secure. Like if they are starting to implement AI services or they need to understand where their data is located, a lot of those things can, can be handled um, during that security assessment as well. So certainly would love customers to, to be able to take a look at it. Excellent. Well, Ed and Ken, thank you so much. Uh, this was some great information. It was really insightful. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate yeah, it. Also want to thank our attendees for taking time out of your day to attend this session on breaking down barriers with DevSecOps and cloud security. We hope to see you again at one of our upcoming events. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Cal Harrison.